Hi peeps. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing okay today. I hope that you are safe and at home and not going stir crazy. Um, today I'm just going to chat for a little bit and maybe talk about ghosts, I think. Um, so, if you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel, please do so now and hit the ringer bell so you get notifications of my new videos and give this video a thumbs up if you like it because that helps me a whole lot and we'll get started here in a moment so yes we are i don't know how many weeks into quarantine and many weeks to go um many days to go and bridget is here helping me today Yes, she knows her name. She's a pretty girl. Bridget's a pretty girl. Yes, she's pretty. She's a pretty girl. And she's a good girl. So I know a lot of people are getting bored at home. Now, I'm used to being home almost all the time just because of my inability to go into restaurants and a lot of stores and stuff. But I know a number of you are going stir stir crazy and trying to find things to do. I'm lucky. Now I've got my writing and my writing, trust me, that keeps me from getting bored. Although now and then I need a break, so I play video games. And one thing I'm going to probably start doing is doing a few streams of my playing The Sims. And I just bought a couple games yesterday. One is called Planet Zoo. And one is called Jurassic World. And once I get the hang of those, I may do a few videos of that too. Because I love creation games, you know, sandbox games when you get in there and you're building things and making things and building worlds. And, and hey, with animals and dinosaurs, can't make me much happier. So I will be doing a few videos of those in the future. Uh, let's see, I was going to talk about ghosts today. talked about Sasquatch last time. So, obviously people know I believe in ghosts. So yes, I do believe in ghosts. There are a number of different types, and I explore this in my books. In this case, it may be where my books are closest to my beliefs in reality of any sort of cryptozoology or supernatural thing. So yeah, um, Whisper Hollow has a lot of my feelings about ghosts in it. You know, I do believe there are a number of types of ghosts. There are ones that don't hurt us. There are ones that are like recreations of the, the death that happened, like the person will be reliving their death over and over. In fact, some of them, I think, are just an imprint on an imprint in time and space of what happened. Now, have I seen ghosts? Yeah, I have. A, I grew up in a haunted house. Um, I didn't see them, but I heard them. I heard ghosts calling my name. And I knew that it wasn't anybody else because I would call down to my mom and stepdad, stepdad. Did you call me? And they'd be like, no. But I heard someone calling my name. Um, I had dreams about them, and I was terrified of my bedroom. I would stand at the bottom of the stairs at night, and you have to understand, I lived in an old two-story house. It was built in 1912, so it had had a number of prior owners. And I think my mom and stepdad bought it in the late 50s. Uh, it was before I was born, but it wasn't too long before I was born, I believe. Anyway, so they bought it then, and you come in the front door, and directly to the left of the front door was a staircase that went up, and then it turned and went back up, and that went up to my bedroom and a second bedroom upstairs. Well, every time I went to bed at night, now my bedroom was directly at the top of the stairs so you'd go up the stairs directly into my bedroom and there was one off to the side i was so afraid of that bedroom of the side bedroom especially that i would stand as soon as the stairs turned i would stop and i would stand there and i would gather my courage 
and I left my door open in the morning because I needed it to be open when I went up at night because I would stand at the bottom of the landing there, gather my courage, take a deep breath and run up the stairs into my room and then shut the door behind me. So I couldn't, couldn't see what was in that room down the hall because that second bedroom had a lot of very disturbing energy in it. And there was an, it was one of those weird old houses. I mean, it's like down the little hall that led to the second bedroom was an attic space. And it was a very short door, about four feet tall. And basically you would pry it open and crawl in the attic there. There was something in that attic. And honestly, there were, I know now because I've had dreams since then of that place and also in talking to one of my nieces she felt the same thing there were two old women up in that area they were mean as hell now I don't know what kind of spirits they were but they were freaking scary and they terrified me and in the dream when I actually saw them I was just like crap that's what I was scared of all those years is those old women um, but yeah, I was terrified of that second bedroom. So I'd run in my room and slam the door behind me because I was afraid of seeing anything that might come in. So I'd keep the door closed all night and the next morning, you know, I'd leave it wide open. So the next night I could run upstairs again to my bedroom. We also had a basement that scared the crap out of me. It was an unfinished basement. Three of the sides were still dirt. You know, it'd been dug out and shored up a bit, but there was still dirt on, you know, a couple of the sides. Um, it was kind of a com combination crawl space basement, but it was a full basement in terms of you go down there through the on the stairs and you were standing up and stuff. It wasn't like lowered down. But A, we had a ton of black widows and they were. They were everywhere. Um, I grew up learning that you don't stick your hand in a hole and you don't stick your hand in a dark space without shining a light in there first to see what's in there. Because A, we had black widows and D or B, we had rattlesnakes in the area. So I learned early that you look before you touch. You look before you put your hand in something. You look in your shoes before you put your shoes on because Black Widows got in there and they would spin webs. Um, they would crawl down. I mean, I remember seeing a lot of Black Widows and we had an old washer that was out back that had been replaced. And when um, my mom and stepdad hauled it off to the dump, they got some help from my cousins or something. And I remember standing there watching as they were moving it and you saw as they moved it, oh, there was a nest of black widows under it. So yeah, you know, it's like, there's a reason I write spooky things. I grew up in spooky. I grew up in spook central. So the basement was terrifying. Um, I hated going down there. I knew there were things down there. I could feel them. And my mom would make me go down there to get fruit because that's where we kept our fruit that we canned. Uh, we used to can about 500 jars of fruit a year and tomatoes and so I would have to go down there to get it and I was so scared every time I went down there. The stairs were steep, I mean it was a perfect setup. The stairs were steep, there was no railing so you had to kind of hold on to the side of the wall when you went down and the fruit was on shelves beneath the stairs so of course there were spiders all over so yeah, I um, I really hated the house that I grew up in. Not only that, but it had the emotional baggage from some of the abuse and stuff. But honestly, there were there were things there. I remember sitting there one night, and I, mom was on my left, and my stepdad was sitting in a chair away from the table. And I was sitting there and all of a sudden something started pinching me. And I turned to my mom 
because it pinched me on my left side. And I turned to my mom, I go, stop, you know, don't pinch me. She was like, what are you talking about? And I realized she was knitting. She hadn't been doing anything. And I was looking at her and the thing pinched me again. And I was just like, knock it off, stop it. So, you know, we had a number of things in that house. So by the time I left, I was a very psychic. So, you know, it's like I sensed a lot of these things really easy. And B, I was really into studying about stuff like this as well. So by the time I left home, I was just done. I, I went back to that house maybe twice after I left at 17 and that was it because I just couldn't take it. I hated that place and there was no reason for me to go back and visit. It just wasn't going to happen. So when I moved over to Olympia, um, I, I could sense things and by then I wasn't nearly as afraid because by then I was beginning to utilize my my psychic powers, I was beginning to work with them and try to control them and learn how to make them work right. And, you know, it's like shortly after that, I moved over to Olympia when I was 18. I um, Less than half a year later, less than six months later, A, you know, I had that incident where I saw the unicorn, where I met the goddess, got into the craft. And then I began to learn how to cope with my abilities and learn how to use them and ward against things so I could ward things out. Now, it's funny because I love shows like Medium and um, other shows like that. But I keep, every time I would watch an episode of Medium, I would sit there thinking, why don't you ward against this? Why aren't you putting up barriers? Why aren't you putting up boundaries? Why aren't you putting up wards? You don't have to be assaulted by these spirits. And it was, it was funny because I loved the show. I really did. I will watch every episode of that again and again, except the last one. I hated the last final episode of the series. I was so pissed off by it. But the rest of the series I'll watch over and over again. But I still, to this day, it's like, teach your kid how to deal with this. Teach your kid how to ward. There are ways to prevent being at the mercy of these spirits. So, so yeah, that, that kind of, when I watch shows about ghosts and stuff, like especially fiction movies, you know, or even nonfiction where people know how to deal with this, it's like, why aren't you taking some precautions, you know? Why aren't you cleansing your house? Why aren't you smudging your house? Why aren't you putting up a psychic barricade? Um, and I suppose, you know, a lot of people wouldn't know how to do this. But it just makes sense to me. It's like, you know, you don't let people get too close to you physically that you don't want near you. You do that on a psychic level too. It's like, no, you stay out there. Stay out there. You, know, you don't come any closer than this. Um, but I suppose a number of people don't know how to do things like that or don't even think about it. So let me see other incidents of ghosts that I have had contact with. Oh, uh, well, when I lived in Olympia before I met Sam, I was hanging out at a friend's shop. They, uh, she and her husband had a witchcraft shop and I used to read tarot down there, tarot cards. And I would go down there every day and I would read the cards. And that's how I made my living for a while because I had quit my job. I moved into a converted school bus. I slept with an ax by my head or a hatchet because I was on the back end of five acres and nobody could have heard me out there if something went wrong. So I learned to make do on my own. I learned how to deal with life on my own. And so I would go down there in the day and I would read the tarot cards for people and we, the three of us, my friend and her husband and I, start getting fairly well known and well I already was known in the pagan community of, of the area 
but we start getting fairly well known for our abilities to deal with spirits and the like. So we would get people coming in asking for our help. And we occasionally would go out and deal with some of these ghosts. We, we knew how to do exorcisms. We knew how to do house cleansings, stuff like that. So we get this one woman we knew. She was like, I'm having a lot of problems. And she had a daycare on her land, um, she and her husband. And the kids were seeing ghosts, and they were scared. And things were happening, so we went out there. Well, honestly, it was like the perfect storm. A, there was a land diva, a vortex, um, created by an ancient tree spirit that had been cut down. And I sensed that it had been cut down like underneath where the daycare was. But there was this vortex of energy on her land drawing, drawing in spirits. So... So we're like, okay, we have to deal with this because it's just running amok and it's drawing in tons of stuff. So A, we taught her how to deal with mirrors. A, you never want a mirror facing a doorway or a mirror facing another mirror because that creates a portal. That creates an opening for things to come through. So we helped her figure out how to move the mirrors around in her house that she could because she had mirrors facing doors. She had mirrors facing mirrors. Um, it, was, it was just adding to the chaos. Second, we located where the energy was coming through her house particularly and created a crystal grid there to channel the energy so it wouldn't like just spew out like a tornado. Then we went out to her daycare, which was in a secondary building on the acreage she had. There were several spirits there. A, there was this little boy spirit. He didn't know how to move on. And I wasn't, I wasn't sure if he died there or not. We, we got the sense that he died nearby and just sort of been pulled in by the vortex. There was an old man there who was mean as crap. I mean, he was vicious. And he was scaring the other spirits there. He was terrorizing them. And there was an older uh, Native American woman there, and she was kind of watching over the kids in the daycare, trying to protect them from this old spirit, and this old creepy guy. So, the first thing we had to do was help the little boy. And we used a combination of chanting and drumming and just guiding him to move him on. And we managed to help him move on. And then it came to dealing with the old guy. And we knew that the Native American woman, her spirit would leave once he was gone because she wouldn't be needed there anymore. So we went into the area where around the daycare there was a workshop built sort of in back of the daycare and the strongest energy was coming from the workshop area. Well, we get back there and understand this was in like early, early spring. I mean, it was cold still. So, and by then there wasn't anything out yet in terms of be, um, flowers and stuff. So we head up the stairs to the loft above the workshop and these bees start coming down and it's like crap where are they coming from they should not be awake they should be in their hives asleep they were not happy either so we kind of backtracked but the energy you could hear him laughing you could actually hear he was behind it he had woken these bees up so <coughs> So, the next thing that we decided to do was deal with him. And we had to lure him out because he was really entrenched. While we were in the workshop, there were some toys there. And you know, you've seen like the dinosaurs 
that have the painted on eyes and stuff. Well, there was like a lizard toy, about that long. And it had, you know, the eyes were painted on and stuff. Well, we were looking at that and the eyes started spinning. And it was like this low grade budget, low budget horror film. You know, the, the spirit was trying to scare us. Um, a skull appeared in one of the uh, window panes that was over a door, you know, half door, half window. Well, a skull was floating in there, and we were just like, you know, it was scary, I will say that. But if we had not been there at that moment, it would have seemed cheesy and funny. And once we realized he was using these tricks to try and scare us, we were just like, okay, enough that's enough. You know, we do not need this. We spent five hours that night basically pushing him out. And it, it got to be like an exorcism. You know, it was our form because we're witches and it's slightly different than, you know, if you had like a Catholic, uh, Catholic, Catholic exorcism or something. But we basically pushed him out, drove him out. And he was not happy to go, but we finally got him out. And then the the uh, Native American lady, she went on her own. And the place was clear, and we staged it, and we smudged it, and we cleansed it, and did everything. And we told her, we told the woman who owned the land, okay, here's the thing you need to keep that crystal grid up because it will help focus the vor energy coming through the vortex so that it doesn't start drawing in things. You need to make sure that you don't, you know, let a lot of chaotic energy into your house because it's going to draw in things. This is not going to be fixed that quickly if you don't keep this up. A year later, she decided that she was really scared of all this stuff, of the crystal grid and everything. She got rid of it all, and of course, stuff started happening again. What can I say? You know, it's like, you can't make people be smart. Uh, so that, that was another really intense experience that I've had with ghosts. And there were another number of other things. You know, it's one thing that we used to tell people, and I still tell people, don't dabble. If you don't know how to do these things, don't dabble. Don't use an Ouija board because it is a portal. It will bring in things. You may not be able to get rid of what it brings in. You know, don't do a seance. Um, don't start trying to stir up spirits. If you don't know how to deal with this, you are going to cause problems. And we cleaned up more than one mess that people did, especially teenagers just playing around, thinking, oh, I want to try this, I want to try that. We went out and cleaned up several messes that they made because they couldn't deal with what they'd summoned up. Now, it's not that all ghosts are bad or anything. In fact, probably most aren't. Most are probably just lost. But a, you don't want to traumatize them further by stirring them up. B, if you do encounter a nasty spirit, and there are nasty spirits on the astral, there are malevolent beings. If you do encounter one of them, unless you know how to deal with it, you may not be able to get rid of it. So, unless you know what you're doing, and I mean seriously no, as in having trained with someone or practiced for years or have a natural ability for this. You know, leave well enough alone. If you are having ghost problems, then you might want to consult an expert or read several good books on the subject and start warding your house. That can help. Sometimes it can make things a little worse if the spirit is strong enough and you aren't sure enough of your own energy. But saging your house, keeping the energy clear, keeping your house uncluttered. Clutter brings in chaotic energy, which opens up the path for chaotic spirits. Um, 
cobwebs, clutter, you know. I've had a number of people, when they see pictures of my house, and like my office is cluttered right now, which I'm going to change this afternoon. I'm starting, I need to clear it up before I start the next book, because it always gets a bit cluttered by the time I finish a book. But people see pictures of my house, like when I put up pictures of my decorations and stuff. And I've gotten people go, oh, wow, I thought you'd live in like some gothic mansion. It's like, um, no, I don't want clutter. I don't want cobwebs. I don't want dust and shadows and stuff. Because I want my energy in my house clear. And I keep it warded heavily. You know, I occasionally get spirits coming in, but usually it's animal spirits or sometimes, you know, especially the Fae, since I work with the Fae. Um, but most spirits are, are out of my house because I keep up wards against it. I don't like dealing with spirits. I really don't. I don't enjoy dealing with ghosts. Uh, I'd much rather deal with something else on the astral than I would a ghost. Simply because a, sometimes it's just a sad case of they are, they're lost, they don't know they're dead yet. And other times, they've got a bone to pick with people who are alive. And I don't want to be their target. So, yeah, there's just a few of my experiences. Um, as far as what you can do to keep your house clear, a clean it. Keep a clean house. Keep it clutter free. Keep the cobwebs out of the corners. Every now and then stir the energy up like sage water. Spray sage water around the house or smudge. You know, smudge with sage. Um, that's one thing witches use brooms for. And I've, I've got a broom on my Oh, I guess you can't see it because the door's closed. Well, I've got a broom that is hanging in my office. And every now and then I take that and use it to sweep the energy. Uh, you just brush it through the air. Also, ringing a bell. Taking a bell and walking around your house, ringing the bell will shake up the energy and it'll get it moving. What you want is a movement, a circulation of energy. Just like you would have a circulation of air due to a fan or an air cleaner. Think of it like that on an energetic level. You are trying to get the, the energy moving and circulating so it doesn't get stagnant because stagnant energy attracts negative energy. It attracts spirits. It attracts just psychic gunk. Put it that way. And there are little creatures that can attach them to you, that can attach themselves to you that are not necessarily evil or bad, but they feed, they leech off of energy. You know, it's sort of like, think of it like a psychic tick or a psychic leech. And it doesn't have to be an active, you know, malevolent force. It can be just some little creature out there on the astral going, ooh, I'm hungry. There's something I can feed off of. So you want to keep your own energy moving and circulating too. And for that, part of it is meditation, part of it is cleansing the self, um, not just taking a shower, but that, that, that helps, especially in these times, but also just focusing on your energy and seeing it moving and circulating and seeing it protected and putting up your boundaries, you know. Uh, I suppose maybe next time I should do a show on how to create psychic boundaries. Um, maybe next time or the time after, depending on when I figure out how to do a walkthrough of like my creative verse world that I want to show you guys. Um, or maybe my Sims that I want to. I play The Sims 3, by the way. I have not gotten The Sims 4 because I heard it was kind of dumbed down and they had taken away a lot. And while I think there are some, I may get it just to see what's there, but I love The Sims 3. I absolutely love The Sims 3. So I may just start a new family at some point and walk you through how I like to play. Um, yeah, I use the cheat codes for money because, hey, you know, I don't want my character to have to work all day, every day. I want to be able to 
do things with my characters. So, um, if you want to see, you know, gaming videos, let me know. If you'd like a show on how to build psychic boundaries and clear your psychic space, let me know and I'll do one on that. Um, uh, I also thought about doing a show on my series Bible because I've been working on the Wild Hunt Bible lately. Uh, since I finished Sunbroken, I've been updating my my series Bible for the Wild Hunt. And I thought maybe I'd go through and show you what I put in my in my series Bibles and how to create one for the authors out there. So otherwise than that, have a wonderful week. I will be back next week. And water, flavored water. I need to hydrate a lot. Um, I will be back next week and it was good talking to you and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so by now. I would really, really love to be able to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of, you know, maybe June. That'd be fun. Um, so yeah, I'll see you next week. Take care and have a wonderful week and be safe. Stay home, stay healthy, be safe. Blessed be.